Hey everybody, Adam here, and welcome to the first video in a new series that I'm starting on Arcade Game Repair. Uh, as you know, I do videos when I repair other people's boards to kind of educate people on uh, you know, how I go about fixing different Nintendo board sets. This series is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to try to educate you guys on to the architecture of arcade games so you can kind of understand a little bit you know, how, uh, how they work, why they're designed the way they are, and it'll help you with troubleshooting your own games and stuff. Um, how to use some of the tools that I use. Um, lots of times I'm playing with like logic probes and the fluke and all that kind of stuff. Logic analyzers if it's really hairy. Uh, so I'll try to go over that too, kind of you know educate you guys on how I use that stuff and what what you know you can use them for, and even the physical stuff like changing ICs or soldering or you know, any of that kind of hands-on stuff. I'll probably go over too. So so yeah, I'm kind of excited. Um, this first video will be just that. It'll be more the physical stuff. I'll, I'll go through how I go about swapping out an IC. Uh, replacing chips and, and uh, sockets and that kind of stuff because I I find that I pretty much have to do that at every bore that I replace or repair rather and so yeah so I'll go over that in this video and hope you enjoy now despite what you might think you don't need any of this stuff you don't need a hundred plus dollar soldering station with adjustable temp control you don't need you know a desoldering vacuum <laughs> station you don't need any of that stuff you don't even need like a twelve dollar uh, flux pen uh, that you can get at Mauser or DigiKey. We're going to go low budget here, so um, you can use a simple soldering iron. Okay, this is as simple as it gets, and a solder sucker. Okay, and you can basically accomplish the same thing that you would do with all that fancy equipment. Now that stuff's great to have and makes your life easier, but it's totally not necessary. And if you're just looking to replace, uh, you know, an IC once in a blue moon, then you know, don't go and waste your money on that stuff. Just grab something that's simple and um, you can go a long way with just simple tools. So that being said, these are the tools we're going to use today. This is just a single temp uh, soldering iron. Um, I think it's a Weller or something. I've had this thing for, boy, 10 plus years. This is a, a de-cleaning sponge, basically just like a brass sponge. You don't have to use that. You can use like an actual sponge, you know, that people put water on. It does the same thing. Uh, a solder put, which is, you know, uh, something that we use to suck the solder out, you kind of load it up that way, hit this button, okay, and it sucks the solder out of a hole or whatever. Uh, solder, I think this is 6040. A pair of really nice um, snips here, flat edged snips. A pair of tweezers, and flux. Now, there's all sorts of different types of flux, liquid flux, flux paste, a flux like I showed you that comes in a pen. This stuff, believe it or not, I've had forever, you can see, is Odie and you can get this at Home Depot. This is actually plumber's paste. Now I love this stuff because it's like kind of tacky a little bit and so it sticks to whatever I whatever I put it on and it doesn't move. And so I mean it doesn't say anything about using this for electronics but it works great and uh, yeah I swear by this stuff. I use it all the time. This is a pan of ice. You do not need this. You could use books you know, to basically prop up the board. We're going to get to that later. But I love this because, um, you know, I can stick my boards right in and lock them down, and that way I can work on them from both sides. You'll see in a minute, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be desoldering some pins from one side and sliding them out from the other side. So this works great. Uh, you can probably get them pretty cheap on eBay, uh, used uh, all day long. Uh, but again, you can just use a stack of books on each side, slide the board in there, and you're all set. So let's start by ripping off the bad IC, and we'll go from there. Now probably the number one misconception I heard about replacing ICs from people online and, and through the forums and stuff is they, they think that you have to pull this guy off in one shot, you know, heat up all the pins and slide this guy out. But let's think about it. If this thing is bad, if we really think that this thing is bad, then what's the purpose of saving it, you know? Why waste our time trying to heat up all the pins in unison and slide the thing out? Let's just cut the leads off and rip this thing off, okay? Um, this is all TTL for the most part. I mean, I know there's some problems down here, but for the most part, when you're you know replacing parts, you're replacing TTL, and you're talking you know pennies. You know, it's under a buck for this thing, and so why waste your time? You know, why why risk uh, heating this thing up crazy and lifting up pads and ruining traces and all that stuff? It's just not worth it. So, grab your snips like I was showing before. These really you know fine um, these thin edge snips here and just go around the thing and just cut all the, the legs off and pull the part off. Then what we'll do is we'll flip the board up sideways, or I should show my hand kind of this way, 
and I can heat up the pins from one side and slide them out from the other side and it makes life so much easier. So here we're just going to cut this guy off. I'm just going to go, you know, one at a time, working my way down, pulling, well not pulling, but cutting these legs off, taking my time. I'm not going to be in a rush here. And um, as long as you have a nice set of snips with really fine uh, pointed tips here, you can slide it right in between the legs and chop them off. So we'll just go around this whole thing and cut this guy right off. Actually, before I go ahead and pull the pins on the board, I wanted to just go over quickly how I also replace sockets. Um, so let's say we want to replace this guy right here, okay? So this is a ROM, and for whatever reason we think that the connections are sketchy, we want to place a socket on this guy. Now I use a flathead, small flathead screwdriver for everything that I remove. Uh, connectors, sockets, pulling ICs out of sockets. Um, some of these ROMs have been in these sockets for 20 years, and the edges are brittle, and you know I've heard so many horror stories of people pulling ROMs out and the pins just crack because they're so frail, whatever. So take your time. I always use a screwdriver for everything. And so basically what I'll do is I'll just slip it under one side and just kind of twist it gently back and forth, flip that end out, then I go over to the other side. If you don't do that and you just keep working on one side, by the time you get this guy out, all of the pins will have been bent in that direction. So. Do a little bit on one side, slide it onto the other side, do the same thing. Just gently rock it back and forth. Okay. And as you're doing this, it's just coming out more and more. Take your time. And you come on the other side here. And that's it. Okay, nice and easy. Now most of these sockets, the way they're manufactured are the pins are pressed in. So lots of times what you can do is if you can get under them. And be careful because there's traces underneath here. So you don't want to just go ballistic and start ripping this guy off. Again, take your time, go slowly. But usually if you just put a little bit of pressure and rock it back and forth like I was removing the, uh, the chip before, you can actually get the pins to slide out the bottom or crack. <laughs> but in either case, I think it's the plastic actually that's starting to crack a little bit. But that's okay because again, we're not saving this thing. So actually, these are coming out really good. I can see it sliding. All these pins are sliding in. Actually, it may make more sense for me to do it this way now. I can slide under it this way, twisting it a little bit. You see that? And if I pull this guy off, and get over it over here, just a little bit, it should come right off. You can see how it's just leaving the pins intact. And I can do the same thing for the top. But just like the other case where I snip the IC and I'm left with the pins, here you can just pull the socket right through and you're left with the pins and then we can go ahead just like we're going to do on the other board and slide these guys out one at a time. So how I set this up usually is throw it in the pan of ice there. That way I can work both sides of the board at the same time. I usually hit that side with the soldering iron, pull the pins out with that side, get the little webcam up. So hopefully I can put this together, you'll be able to see uh, the whole process, putting the socket back in and everything else too. So uh, yeah, so let me set up this camera here, stationary with the little zoom lens and uh, we can see what's going on on both sides. So first thing I want to do is hit this side with flux over here. And so I just go quickly up and down with the brush, put a little bit on there and you can see it sticks on there really good. You can always clean up any extra later. And I got my soldering pen here, I'm just getting all the junk off and grab my tweezers. And so we usually just pick one. I'm going to go with the upper right on this side here. Grab it. And I'm going to swing over to this side. Hit it with that. And slide it right out. That's it. And then what we're going to go back later, well, actually, what we're going to do is go back later with the uh, solder put and suck all the solder out of these holes. But for now, we're just going to slide these out. Easy as that. And just go all the way around. All right, so now as you see, we got all the pins out. Now, one thing I like to do is I have a um, I have a bench top lamp, and so I have it on this side over here, and that way, as I'm moving the solder solder pot around, you see the shadow on the other side there, and so I know exactly where my tip is as I'm working across these holes because I can see the shadow. And so what I'll do is just cock this guy, clean my tip, and then I will 
pick a hole first. Let's say I want to do this guy up here. So I'll get that guy lined up ready to go. And I can see the shadow. And then as soon as I as soon as I see that solder liquefy, go ahead and suck it out. There we go. See that? And I don't know if you can tell. Try to refocus this camera a little bit. But you can see right through that hole to the other side. There you go. You can kind of see it. And that's it. I mean I basically just go through. It's a little, you know, a little tedious. But um, hey, if you don't want to spend $200 on a um, automatic uh, desoldering station, then you've got 20 bucks in your pocket, then this is the way to go. So again, I just line up a hole here, get that solder, bam. You can see that right through. Oh, I'm gonna refocus here. There you go. So yeah, I'm gonna work my way around, clean this whole thing up, and then we'll be ready to put in a socket. There we go. So look at that. Looks brand new. A little time, but you get great results. So now that's all cleaned up, front and back, we'll go ahead and throw in our new chip. So here's our new chip. First thing I like to do is, if I can reach over here, just butter these guys up a little bit with some flux. You know, just go in and out a little bit. That way, once we heat it up, the flux will actually be drawn onto the legs. And what am I sticking this guy? Let me see if I can do this so you can see it. Slide that over right there. Oh, hold on a second. Line him up. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is um, it's going to be kind of hard for me to, to, to show you, so let me see if I can explain it to you. What I'm going to do is hold this with one finger. I'm going to take my uh, soldering iron, actually, I might be able to do a little bit. Typically what I do is, because this guy wants to fall out, he just wants to slide right out. So I got my soldering, on well my solder rather, right here. Pull a little bit out like that, can you see that? Okay, cool. And so I'll flip the board over, take my soldering iron, I'll just touch it to this a little bit, just to get a little bit of solder on there. And I'm gonna touch one corner of the chip, and I'm gonna hit this again, get a little more solder on the chip, touch the other corner. So the upper right corner, lower left corner get both corners of the chip. That way I can let go with my finger and then just go right through and solder it all. So let me do the two corners and then I can set up the camera and basically just show you how to do the rest. All right, so always wanna keep our tip clean. So I'm just cleaning my tip here. And basically, as long as your tip's hot enough, you can do it really quick. There's one. Just move your way down. like that. Nothing. No great skill involved. Just work your way down. Take your time. I'm going to move the camera so I don't screw up and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. That is it. Done. Took all but uh, like 20 seconds. So let's fire it back up. Throw the board back in the uh, stack there, fire it up, and uh, see how it goes. Okay, uh, you can't really see it, but uh, this is the guy we replaced right there. And so this is an actual board, you know, that I'm fixing for a customer. And there we go, that's what we want to see. Check the other monitor. Gorgeous. So yeah, that's it. Um, I guess the tips to take away from this are to take your time. Definitely use uh, flux. Don't even attempt to do something like this without flux. Um, and yeah, don't try to salvage the ICs. Just you know, snip them off, get rid of them. Otherwise, you'll just end up you know ripping up traces and cursing, and probably end up selling your board as parts on eBay. So yeah, that is it. Hopefully, you found this useful, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.